Welcome. This is James Galliard, and this is my podcast, Orthos Straight Talk. Sometimes we're talking about personal growth, sometimes it's about pastoral ministry, and sometimes it's public policy. But whatever we're talking about, the talk is straight. I hope today's show informs you, and I hope it inspires you. Well, welcome everyone. This is Pastor James Gellier. We're at Tabernacle Church, and I want to welcome you to today's master class. Today, I want to talk about vision. I'm going to do a master class today on vision. In the book of Proverbs it tells us that without vision, the people perish. And so I want to spend a few moments just dealing with this issue of vision. I want you to think for a moment about everything that we not just enjoy, but everything that we take for granted that is a direct result. This was very convicting to me. It's a direct result of other people's visions. And so, I mean, I'm in a podcast room right now. I did not create the idea of a podcast room, right? I'm mean, actually in a video podcast room. And so this was not, you know, my brainchild, right? If someone else had a vision that, People could sit at a microphone with a camera in front of them and communicate with the world. When you start thinking about the cars we drive, right, the vision, I'm aging myself when I say this, but I remember cars without power steering or without power brakes, you know, so someone had vision for things to be more. Now we're moving into the realm of of electric cars and hybrid vehicles. Um, and so, so much of of what we enjoy is other people's visions. I remember, you know, to my college students that may be watching this, it may be something you can really connect with, but, you know, my term papers in college were typed on a, a Smith Corona typewriter. Someone had a vision around computers and now those computers have evolved. And so, as we talk about vision, as we think about vision, I think it's important to recognize how important it is. So I, the reason I say that is because I want us to be careful that we're not overly critical, uh, cynical of other people's visions. Because without people who have vision, they are – our society is stalemated. Our society stops moving forward. And so what is vision? Vision is – a divine portrait. It's a divine portrait of our potential and it is a picture of our possibilities that rescues mankind from his perishing predicament. That's a mouthful. It's a divine portrait of potential. It's a picture of possibility that is given to us because it's a divine portrait is given to us then by God. And the purpose is not for one individual, one person, one church in our case, to thrive and to prosper. It is so that God can use that vision to release a broader blessing to mankind. So in a very real way, then vision becomes a bridge. Picture a bridge. Vision becomes a bridge between the present and the future. And without vision, we are forever stuck in the present. So when we fight against vision, when we don't support vision, we don't embrace vision, when we don't encourage vision, indirectly, passively, we are really saying we want to stay in the present. And so this is why sometimes, and because the present is comfortable, right? And so oftentimes when people are pushing against and railing against a vision that a person has, it's because I've gotten comfortable in my present. I've gotten comfortable in our situation. And so we have to recognize the value of vision as it relates to that. And so, you know, and think of it like this. I'm wearing glasses, obviously, and I'm very careful to clean my glasses with a a really soft cloth. I have, as a matter of fact, I have cloths just for that purpose. I don't use them for anything else. I don't clean my glasses with paper towels or with regular towels or with or not even with with uh, tissues a very specific um, uh, cloth I use to clean my glass. And this is the reason. The reason is because I don't want to run the risk of getting my lens scratched or scratched. The reason I don't want my lens scratched is because once my lens gets scratched, everything I look at has the potential to look scratched. 
So this issue of vision is very important because without having proper vision, we wind up having impaired vision. So it's really, really important that we recognize to embrace visionaries and we ourselves need to become visionaries. And as I speak in this podcast today, I want to encourage us to really be prayerful about this issue of God using us to be visionaries. And so I want to say maybe four big principles I want to give you when as we start looking at this, as we start thinking about this. And, you know, the Bible says that without vision, the people perish. Um, literally, in other versions of it, it says where there is no vision, no prophet to expound the law, no priest or Levite to teach the good knowledge of the Lord, no means of grace. Um, there is no open vision. The people will perish. In other words, it says the people cast off restraint. They just act wild. The people uh, wind up naked and stripped of their ornaments and they are exposed. I want you to get this. Literally, it teaches them without vision, people are exposed to shame. People are stripped. People are have their armor taken from them. They're, they're literally left bare and then they wind up rebelling. This is why I think it's so important to speak vision over your children um, because we don't want our children left bare. We see it, generations of young people that have no vision and because they don't have vision and vision was not shared with them they have acted rebelliously they have cast it off restraint and we see the very things same thing that happens even within our churches and so as we start thinking about this and looking at this i want to i want to share with you why vision is so significant number one vision is significant because it is a statement of revelation Vision is a statement of revelation. The reason it's a statement of revelation is because vision comes from God. So when I am lacking a support of vision, I'm really lacking support of godly revelation, right? Because vision comes from God. It doesn't come from people. It comes by way of God first. And so it is about revelation. It, it is God responding to human need. So then when I don't support vision, I'm saying, God, I don't want there to be a response to human need. Um, someone had a vision for Red Cross. Someone had the vision for Samaritan's Purse. Someone had the vision for uh, United Way. Someone had the vision for disaster relief services. Someone had a vision given by God to address human needs. So when we are in an environment of vision, and particularly in churches, because I'm a pastor and I am speaking in re in relation to the vision God has given us with our impact center and the programming and everything God is showing us in all of our sensors. We have vision. And when we support the vision, what I'm saying is, God, I support revelation. I support you speaking. Um, vision is God. Why does God do it? God gives it because God is saying I want you to recognize that because I made you, you deserve more. And so sometimes we have to take a look at ourselves and say, you know what? God's vision for me is more than this. God desires more for me than this. So what God does is he begins to progressively reveal the vision he's given. Um, this is why we need to be around other visionaries just for free, because my vision needs to be stimulated because it's progressively revealed um, and it's progressively revealed from God. So when I'm around other people that are visionaries, then God uses those individuals who have already become successful to stimulate my imagination so that I understand what's possible. So the first big thing when people say to you, why do you, why do you support vision, the vision? Why do you support the vision of Word Tabernacle Church? Well, I support the vision of Word Tabernacle Church because I believe that vision is a statement of revelation, and I believe it is God-given, and I support revelation. Let me give you a second reason. I think the second reason we support is because vision is, it requires examination. So just like going to the doctor, and the doctor does his annual examination, um, so that we can make sure everything is right, working correctly, and if there is a problem, um, so that we can address it. That's exactly what vision does. Vision moves us from revelation to examination. 
And so it forces me to dig up the facts. It, it forces me to say, why is this so or why is this not so? And so when we begin thinking about the vision, for example, of our church, we, we start to recognize that in order for it to be realized, we have to ask ourselves, why is this not already the case? And what is it that needs to happen within me to grow to this level? What needs to happen within our organization? What is the strategy that needs to um, be shared, that, that needs to be implemented in order for us to live this out? And so literally when God places vision in you, it's to develop you. So whenever you have a vision, whenever I have a vision, it is placed within God, within a, placed by God within us to develop us. So stop right there. So when people say, why do you support the vision? Well, I support the vision because I support revelation, but I also support examination. I support people examining themselves in light of what God is showing us. And then to say, if I'm going to arrive at this, I have to be developed. I'm learning that a lot of times the people that are fighting against the vision are the people that don't want to be developed. The people that don't want to experience self-examination, the people that really want God to shut his mouth and to say, God, we don't want you revealing anything to us. But I think there's a third thing to think about relative to vision. And this is something we really don't like. I certainly don't like it, to be honest, but God uses re uh, vision to accomplish it. The third thing that I want you to think about is aggravation. So we've talked about revelation. We've talked about examination. But then I want you to think about aggravation. Um, this is difficult because no matter what, there will always be villains to vision. There will always be an element of people, a group of people that don't want to see God's agenda move forward, that doesn't want to see rescuing on the land, in the land, that doesn't want to see people get beyond where they are, that don't want to see people rescued from their perishing predicaments. Why would people not want to see that, Pastor? Well, people would not want to see it because sometimes we directly or indirectly benefit from other people's lesser places. And so, and there's there's oftentimes aggravation and attack against vision because people that are visionaries really intimidate people that are not. Because by you having a vision for your life, you are automatically, indirectly though, but you're automatically shedding light on other people's inability to see further than today. Have you ever been in an environment where people are like, but what we have is good enough. What's going on is good enough. We, we don't need more seats in the sanctuary. We don't need more programming for youth. We don't need a school. We don't need a broadcast studio. What we're doing is good enough. What they're indirectly saying by you having vision is that we are intimidated. We are frustrated because you're now showing that I have an inability to see past today. So that's automatically going to surface in some things. And so, so when you have vision, this is why you have to have passion attached to it, right? Because you're going to be attacked. Um, you're going to be vilified. You're going to be persecuted. And in order to survive, you have to be um, passionate. You, you have to be willing to say, God, this, what you have shown me is what I'm living for. So this is important because what vision does is vision makes a demand on our potential. It, it makes a demand. Like, so it's like me waking up, you waking up and God is like, but I have, I have more in you than this. So then he shows you something and it makes a demand on your potential. It's like, it's like, I, I, I have more coming out of you. Don't be satisfied in this place. And, and then I think the other aggravation in vision is it just requires work, y'all. <laughs> it requires getting up every day and grinding. You know, I, I shared this about my father who was the hardest working man I have met. And he, re he taught us about the value of a work ethic. And I've seen something really interesting. I've seen harder working people get advanced quicker than higher talented or gifted people. I've seen people that have just average intellect and average talent, but great work ethic 
surpass the accomplishments of people that are super smart, really talented, but they just need somebody to wake them up every day. They need somebody to force them to stay an extra hour to get it done. So vision becomes difficult because when God shows you something, it's always bigger than you. So it's going to require a workload and a work ethic that oftentimes we're not readily able or willing to embrace. Um, but, and, and this is the last thing I'm going to say. I just wanted to introduce this subject matter of vision. But I think the, the last thing I want you to think about relative to vision is that vision will bring about transformation. Vision results in the possibility of growth. Vision results in high impact. And, and so if there's going to be life transformation, if our school systems are going to get better, if health care is going to get better, if housing is going to improve, if if we're going to start arresting and incarcerating fewer numbers of people, if there's going to be criminal justice reform in the on the earth, if there's going to be opportunities to work for companies that pay a livable wage, if marriages are going to be survive, survive and be sustained, it is going to require people a vision. And so when we embrace vision, what we're really saying is, so when people say, why do you support the vision? I, well, I support the vision because I support transformation. I, I support examination. I support revelation. I mean, I even support aggravation if it means that I have to go through the fire to accomplish what God wants me to accomplish. And so I want, you, I want us to get past just bricks and mortar. And I'm going to, over the next few weeks, talk about that, the bricks and mortar side of the vision. But what I really want us to understand more than anything is why vision matters, why it's so important. And so as you are praying, as you've been thinking about it, um, I want you to embrace the vision. I want to encourage you to do that. I want to invite you to do that. We, God is showing us something significant. And for his glory and with the help of his people, we are accomplishing something significant in his name. But it, it's going to require every member and every partner and every person to embrace the value of vision. I believe in being in an environment where there is great vision being cast. And if great vision is being cast in our churches, in our communities, and in our homes, then God is going to use that great vision being cast to rescue people, to make a difference in the lives of people. We just have to be willing to be men and women who support the vision. So I want to encourage you to identify whether it is your local church, nonprofit, educational institution, where you are clear there is vision. And I want to encourage you to support that vision, both financially and to support that vision in your service. So thanks for tuning in today and letting me journey with you for a few moments in this masterclass on vision. I'm going to come back every week and I'm going to spend just about 10 minutes every session just talking about various aspects of our vision here at Word Tabernacle Church and at the Impact Center so that we can be clear on how the concepts that I've just given you play themselves out in everyday life. Share this with someone and I'll see you next week. Well, thanks for listening to Orthos. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you've got comments or questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and email me, james at jamesgalyard.com. Also, invite some friends to subscribe and follow me on social media. You can reach me on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, or on Instagram. I'll see you next week on Orthos.